Hey YouTube, uh, welcome back to another video. This is Champion 2D Rob back again. Uh, I thought this time I would make a games I've been playing video. Just wanted to talk about a few of the games I've been playing recently. Um, you know, lately I've actually had a chance to um, play a lot of games. Um, I've definitely been uh, playing quite a few retro games, uh, but uh, as of late, I've been playing a lot of uh, one modern game in particular which I'm going to go into I'm not going to bring up every single game I've been playing as of late because it would just take forever but what I thought I would do is I just wanted to talk about three uh, titles that I've been playing um, that you know I just sort of want to talk about just sort of give my thoughts and impressions on and just sort of give you an idea of what they're like you know uh, if it's something that you know you haven't gotten around to or something you think you might like it's, it's you know probably worth checking out but uh, yeah so I've got three titles here so Let's just get right into it. Um, the first, the first game that uh, I played, I actually played this a little while ago. Um, uh, it's been a game that's been on my shelf for ages. Uh, I've been meaning to play it for a very long time. Uh, I, you know, I've always been wanting, I've always wanted to play it, but it's just one of those games I, I just sort of felt I need to be in the mood to play. And uh, everyone kept saying, "Yeah, you got to play this game. Got to play this game." I am actually very late to the party because it's. Um, I, I bought this as it's one of those. Um, HD remakes as it was uh, uh, an older title on the PS2 and the game I'm talking about is uh, Ico. Uh, I haven't played Shadow of the Colossus yet but uh, I did play Ico. I completed the game and uh, you know on the whole you know I, I very much enjoyed it. Uh, I thought it was a very um, minimalist game. Uh, there, w there wasn't really much to it in, in terms of story. It's, it's a very simple premise uh, essentially, you play as you play the role of this kid who is brought to this castle. You're not really sure why. I'm, I'm guessing it's because he he sort of has he was sort of born with horns. He's brought to this castle and he's sort of imprisoned uh, by these people, which are never really explained. And uh, he breaks out of the prison. And uh, as he's sort of trying to make his way out of the prison, he comes across a, a girl who is sort of being kept kept in a cage. Uh, he breaks her out, and then they, the, the the whole game is basically you and the girl uh, trying to trying to break your way, trying to find your way out of this uh, castle-like prison. And there's not much dialogue. In fact, the only dialogue that's in here is not even in English. So it's a very simple game. It's just you're, you're basically you control the boy, and uh, you sort of uh, maneuver your way through all these sort of puzzles and mazes. Uh, and you and at, at certain points you use the girl to help you uh, whether it means you know she has to stand on a platform so that you can open the door by going to another platform but at the same time while you're doing all this you need to protect the girl you need to um, at, at various points these sort of we uh, weird shadow creatures sort of come out and they try to sort of drag the girl away and so whatever you're doing you need to sort of stop what you're doing and you just go back and you have to fight the girl, fight these uh, shadow creatures because if the girl completely disappears and the game is over and uh, yeah it, it, it was certainly um, a very different game than, uh, than what I'm used to playing I mean there are elements that kind of remind me of like Uncharted in terms of the climbing and whatnot but the controls I, I feel are quite dated it's very stiff uh, I think even, even by PS2 standards I, I, obviously this was a PS2 game but I thought the controls, I don't know, maybe I'm just spoiled by games like Uncharted and, and um, you know, the, the sort of more uh, acrobatic games that, that allow you to do a lot of moves while you're, while you're jumping and running, you know, like Tomb Raider and so forth. This one felt really, really stiff to me and, and it, it was kind of odd that you couldn't do certain things. I felt it was kind of weird. Um, I mean, I know this game actually, I co originally started out as a PlayStation 1 title that was then... Uh, became a PS2 title so I, I felt the controls were actually quite dated, wasn't quite used to the very stiff controls, did, did very much remind me of the sort of PS1 days but it was actually, a, on the whole I thought it was a very good game and uh, there was a couple of points where I got stuck uh, puzzle wise and um, I'm, no, I'm ashamed to admit it but um, I had to revert to YouTube some gameplay footage to see how to get out of it but uh, for the most part you know I, I, I sort of made my way with that issue uh, there were there were some very frustrating points in the game. Uh, a lot of it had to do with sort of jumping to, on other platforms. And I'll be honest with you, uh, 
what made it difficult was because I'm just sort of fighting the controls. I just wasn't wasn't really that crazy about the the stiffness of the controls, and a lot of the times I would die. You know, I would fall to my death because I just didn't think the controls were 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 that fluid. Um, but yeah, on the whole though, really did enjoy it, and uh, I highly recommend people check it out. It actually. It's sort of like the game equivalent of, say, like a, a Pixar film. In a, you know, it's very, very, very simple. It's it's just a very basic story, but it's very intriguing. And, and, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, as the game goes along, you, you do tend to become very protective of the girl. It's it's weird, because at first I thought, you know, I don't really give a crap about you. But uh, as you sort of uh, move along the, the game, uh, and, and, and obviously things get progressively harder... Uh, you do start to sort of care a bit more about the girl and you want to sort of protect her a bit more. So it was actually quite interesting the way it sort of, uh, the character makes you sort of develop, uh, uh, you know, concern for that character. And it has quite a sad ending as well. I don't really want to give too much away, but uh, but on the whole though, very, very cool game. Um, I haven't got around to playing Shadow of the Colossus this year. I am going to get around to it at some point. But uh, I just sort of felt it was about time I, I tried one of these games that everyone keeps raving about and uh on the whole yeah it was an enjoyable title um did it blow me away no not really um but i think that's just because i've been sport now by a lot of more sophisticated games of that's it that kind of falls into a similar similar genre but uh i, I do i do admit that there's there's a lot of personality in this game it, it definitely has its own style its own visual look uh but yeah very very cool game Okay, next title I want to talk about, and, and, and this one we're getting a little bit retro here. And uh, I've been playing a lot of, well, I've completed it now, and that is um, Castlevania, Aria of Sorrow. And that is the uh, Game Boy Advance game, uh, although I haven't actually been playing it on the Game Boy Advance. I've actually been playing it on the uh, Game Boy Advance player on the Super Nintendo. I mean, I've since gotten a Retro 5 now, but when I, while I was playing this, I actually played it on my Super Nintendo using a uh, Game Boy Advance player, converter. And, uh, yeah, I, I just decided, you know, it was about time I really wanted to put a lot of time into one of these uh, Metroidvania games. And, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, you know, there was no, there was no, there was no particular reason why I opted to, to start with uh, Aria of Sorrow. But uh, I just sort of, yeah, I feel like playing it, so I did. And I wound up, comp I, I wound up completing it. Um, but uh, I, while I did complete the game, uh, I, I know I didn't complete it properly because I've, I've since discovered that there's actually a, 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 a proper ending. Like, uh, even though I got an ending, and it was in turn a good ending, but uh, I know there's actually more to the game, so I actually need to go back and play it again. But it's actually, believe it or not, it's actually the first time that I've fully completed one of the metroidvania castlevania games um i've never been able to complete them before i i i i i've gotten quite far i think when i played symphony of the nights on the playstation one i got very far into it uh and then i just sort of stopped playing it i think got stuck or something and then i left it for so long i kind of lost where i was at but but aria of sorrow uh i decided to 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 stick stick through it play it play it all the way and I really enjoyed it. Um, uh, you, you play as, a, as, as this... Uh, actually, it's start at the very beginning. The, the game sort of takes place in the future. I believe it starts in like 2032, something like that. Which is quite odd for a not Castlevania game that's actually sort of set in the future as opposed to the distant past. Uh, but yeah, you play a character called Soma Cruz. The, the game is sort of set in Japan. And th there's not a lot of... Um, uh, you don't know much about this character. And... and uh, you get references to, to, to events that have taken place prior with, with the Belmonts and whatnot, but they never really sort of go too much into it. And there's obviously the character you play, Soma Cruz, you know, the, he, he, has, he has developed some abilities and there's not much known about what his history is. And of course, as you sort of go through the game, you eventually discover, you know, um, who you actually are, what your abilities are. And uh, it's a really cool game. I have to admit, I really did enjoy it. I mean, as you also would expect from a Castlevania game, it's also, um, the music is fantastic. Uh, but I did enjoy it. Um, I, I've always said it in the past, that I've always been more of a fan of the linear Castlevania games, like, uh, you know, like 
the original Castlevania uh, 1 and Castlevania 3 and Rondo of Blood. I've always been a more of a fan of the more linear games. Um, but uh, I have to admit, I, I really did enjoy Aria of Sorrow. Uh, very cool game. Uh, the other one in this double pack is Harmony of Dissonance. Uh, I've only started playing that a little bit, but I haven't really gotten too far into it. But Aria of Sorrow is fantastic. Uh, there is a sequel to Aria of Sorrow. It's, it's on the DS. It's called um, Dawn of Sorrow. I haven't, I haven't got around to fully playing that yet, but uh, yeah, I just thought it was about time that I, I sort of got with one of these Metroidvania games and really sort of put the time into it. So, I, you know, I have completed it. Uh, great adventure game. You sort of sort of level up the character and gain new abilities, and it's very cool how it all works. Uh, a really long game as well for a Game Boy Advance game. It's actually surprisingly long. So yeah, very enjoyable game. A lot of fun. Uh, definitely recommend if you haven't checked out sort of these um, uh, Metroidvania sort of games. You sort of Castlevania action platformers with a bit more exploration, uh, leveling up and stuff. It's actually really really cool. Definitely check it out if you haven't. Uh, of course, you know if you if you've already, if, if you're already um, uh, a fan of these games, I, you don't really need me to tell you anything. But uh, yeah, very cool game. Very glad I, I finally uh, got over a just sort of decided to just jump right in and, and, and get through it. So I'm actually really chuffed that I finally uh, completed Aria of Sorrow. So yeah, that's uh, that. And uh, finally, the game I want to talk about, and this is a game that uh, I've been putting off for a very long time. Mostly because I've been intimidated by it. It's it's a, it's an RPG, but it's actually a Western RPG. It's not it's not a Japanese RPG. And it's actually the very first um, Western RPG that I've actually ever played. I've never played any of them. Um, and I was quite intimidated by it because um, the sequel to this game is very well known. But uh, for me, I had to start at the beginning, and I and I've actually heard that the first one um, can be quite long winded. Uh, it's much more difficult to get into compared to, say, the second game. So, you know, I, I've been putting it off for a long time. And it definitely was something that I had to be in the mood for. But I eventually decided to get around to, to playing it. And, yes, I have completed it. And the game I'm talking about is Mass Effect. And uh, I have to say I absolutely loved this game. Um, uh, I was hooked from the moment I put it on. The story just grabbed me, and this is an insanely long game. Um, I mean, I've I've actually got the entire Mass Effect trilogy. I bought the box set, so I, you know, it's the only way you can get the physical of the original Mass Effect on the PlayStation Three. And uh, yeah, so I decided to start with this one. I absolutely loved it. You, you play as a character called John Shepard, who you can actually customize to your to your particular taste. Um, you know, his story progression is fantastic. I really did enjoy it. Um, it's a very, very long game. I mean, at its core, uh, Mass Effect is not is more of a third-person shooter. It's very cool. It's a third-person shooter. Um, but there are a lot of RPG elements to it. You level up characters. You have to... Uh, you've got various sub uh, hub worlds that you sort of venture out and do a lot of you've got your like your main missions and then you've got your side missions and you have to re recruit characters as well to your team uh you get to fight alongside your team you know you have to also can uh give them commands uh tell them when to change their weapons but it's all done in real time so it's not like a, a turn-based rpg it's, it is it is all done it's a third person uh, uh run and gun shooter with some driving sections as well thrown in, and uh, yeah, the, the main the main campaign uh, is 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 quite a feat. It's quite long, but if if you sort of take the time to do all the side missions, then the game uh, can be a very very long game. I mean, I didn't actually do much of the side missions. I did a few, but I didn't do all of them, and uh, I already clocked up like sort of um, over twenty hours with this game. And, uh, you know, I, I just mainly decided to focus the main story because I, I think one of the bad things I didn't like about the game is that a lot of the side quests and what are actually kind of the same. Um, you know, you sort of land on a planet in your sort of desert buggy and you sort of have to ride around, you shoot a couple of people, you pick something up and then you go back. A lot of it is sort of like that. But on the whole, I, I, I loved it. Um, and, I, and I have to admit, I've after playing Mass Effect, I've, I've really become a fan of the series um, 
uh, I mean, right now I'm already playing Mass Effect 2. I'm I'm like already like well into that game. Like I've got done a lot of hours into the second game. Absolutely loving it as well. Um, I I definitely understand the hype for the Mass Effect series. Uh, what, I mean this this game just sucked me right in. Just great sci-fi storyline. Great characters. Great development with the characters. Um, you get to choose your favourites. Uh, if you side with one, sometimes you know you fall out with the other. It's very cool. It's a very good game. And there's even a bit of a, a, a romantic subplot with a couple of the female characters as well. It's a very, very cool game. Really did enjoy it. So, uh, yeah. So that's it, guys. That's basically been the, the three titles, the three sort of main uh, titles I've been playing. Uh, I have been playing uh, retro games as well. Um, uh, since picking up the Retron 5, uh, spending spending a bit of time playing some of my uh, Super Famicom games. Uh, but uh, what I just showed you was pretty much the ones that I've sort of put real sort of time into. Uh, but yeah, that's it, guys. So, uh, you know, I, I do hope to bring these uh, this series of videos back into sort of a regular rotation. Just sort of let you guys know what I'm playing. Um, because, you know, I, I think it's important that, uh, you know, that as we're sort of making a lot of these sort of pickup videos, it's just sort of great to also see that we're playing these games and you know and, and i'm sure there are people out there that are interested to see what my thoughts are on um on some of these games that i'm playing and um just like i like to see uh these sort of videos from other people as well uh because it's, it's just always great to, to get people's insights on on, on on particular games as well so that's it guys uh stay tuned i will be back very soon i think i'll probably have a pickup video coming up very soon so uh stay tuned for that and i'll be back bye bye